Hello, this is Mrs. Meyer. This is a video for students and their parents at Springfield High School for just kicking off the start of their first year of biology. Now, I won't get into a ton of details about the biology class, but I'm going to use the syllabus to highlight some of the important things. And then, of course, as I get to know you better and you get to know me better throughout the year, we'll both learn more about each other and more about the course. So for the syllabus, on the left hand side here, we have the objectives of the biology course. Uh, biology is a science course, but it also teaches a lot of other um, types of skills and ways to think. So all of those are on the side here. You'll notice some of the things that are important to science are observation, problem solving, communication, working on a team, using technology and learning about engineering, and then also applying science to other disciplines like English and social studies and things like that. So those are kind of our broad goals for the biology course, along with, of course, learning some biology. So in general, the way that I approach teaching in the biology course is summed up in the learning philosophy and the learning process. And I'll just kind of go over those quickly and kind of lump them together. Basically, I know that all students can learn, even though students may learn at a different pace or may be interested in learning different things or in a different way. And so I've tried to structure the class in a way that allows all students to be successful in learning, but have it personalized a bit so that they can reach those milestones in learning in a way that best suits them. So down below here, it gets into the course content. And basically, it sums up that the content for the course comes from our state Minnesota standards for science and also the national uh, science standards that have been established. And so that's the content of what we have to learn in biology. But how we do that and um, the different methods we get out of learning those things is really up to the student as to how they learn best. So I want that student to have some choices and how they access their content, whether it's through their textbook, through a video, through a website, through an iBook. We're going to have lots of conversations this year about how do you learn best. Um, into the course design, it also goes into a little bit of not only the content that you're going to be learning, but the science processes that you're going to be learning. So asking good science questions, defending an argument, things like that. All of this learning, whether it's course content or course design, is going to take place in two different places. Either your research notebook, which is the composition notebook that you will be using in class, and your iPad to make various products that show what you've learned. So that research notebook is one that I've already purchased for you. It is a total of $2.50 that you owe back to me for that purchase, and that's the only thing you'll need all year besides your iPad. Okay, now we've learned a little bit about what you'll be learning, some biology content as dictated by the standards and some science-y kind of stuff. But now, how will we know if you learned it? And this is going to be a little bit different than some of your other courses, so I want to take some time to make sure you understand this. There are two areas where you'll be learning things in biology, within the biology content and within the uh, science processes. The content is going to be 80% of your grade, and the processes are going to be 20% of your grade. You won't be getting points for these two areas, however. These areas are going to be divided into levels, just like when you first started swimming lessons and you started off at a beginner level and you worked your way up as you improved your skills. Um, the levels for the content standards, again, trying to hold all students to that ability or that um, belief that they can achieve science content. So those levels are going to be a three or a four in order for the student to move on. So we'll talk more about those levels in a second but the three or the four are considered proficient at those different content standards. And we're going to see what your level of learning is multiple times throughout a unit. So I'll talk more about that later as well. The process standards, again, are those sciencey things that you're going to be doing. So in this course, we'll be looking at something called scientific modeling, so making scientific models and interpreting scientific models, and then also a scientific argument. A scientific argument is different than an argument like you might have with your brother or sister. Scientific argument is kind of like your conclusion based on evidence that you collect. 
So most of these standards will be addressed in investigations and lab reports that you do in class. And then down here at the bottom, just to emphasize that because the emphasis in this class is on learning and learning at a pace that's right for you, there are no penalties for late assignments. So we do have a cutoff, however, when I have to assign grades, and that is the end of the quarter. So you would technically have until the end of the quarter to complete an assignment, and by an assignment, we're really talking about standards here to get those standards up to a level three or a level four. Um, if I feel like you're falling behind, and that um, you're just going to have a huge bunch of work to build up at the end of the quarter, then I'll probably talk to you and see if we can find some time together. And if that doesn't work, I'll probably put that assignment or that standard on the ICU list so you can get in and get some help on that before it becomes a big insurmountable problem at the end of the quarter. Okay, on to the next page. Here's where we get a little bit more into those levels and what I was talking about earlier. So on the right hand side here, I'm looking at the science grading rubric. So starting at the bottom, just like beginning swimming, level one is called emerging. Okay, so the student is just starting to understand the standards. So I would say they're at a level one. The next level is level two or approaching. At this level, the student shows understanding of basic science concepts like definitions or equations or diagrams. So getting closer to understanding the actual target, but not quite there yet. That's why it's approaching. You'll never see a one or two show up in the grade book because those are just formative scores. Those are things that as the student is learning, that's feedback to tell them what level they're at. Something will show up in the grade book when the standard has reached a level three or a proficient. So at a proficient level, the student work is completed to a level that exhibits in-depth understanding. So it's beyond just memorization and also can apply those ideas to bigger concepts and explain their thought as well. So that's what our goal is for all students in when they're learning biology content to become proficient at that level. Some students will push themselves beyond that to a four. This is considered exemplary. At this level, we're exceeding that proficient standard because the students become an expert. He or she can teach others and he or she can connect those science ideas to personal experiences and new questions. Again, students will have multiple chances to advance through these levels as a unit goes on. And we'll talk more about that, what that's going to look like in class. But let's scoot over to where it says tests and quizzes here real quickly to reemphasize that there are no unit tests in this course. Instead, what will be happening is students will get multiple assessments, which may or may not be a quiz of sorts, a traditional quiz, to see where they are on this ladder of levels. So a student might be at a level one on one learning target and a level three on another learning target uh, during the first week. And then after week two, maybe they've gone up a bit in both of those targets. So I'm constantly assessing how the students are learning and where they are and giving them feedback as to where um, they can go. So again, students will be assessed multiple times and they have until the end of the quarter to bring any target up to that level three. All right, parents, this is especially for you. There are lots of ways I'm going to be communicating with you throughout the year. Um, I may occasionally send a progress report home. That's pretty unusual, though, because uh, learning, as I said, is a process, and it's really not until we've reached the end of the quarter that we have a real solid grasp on what a grade is. However, I want to report your child's progress to you, so you can also expect information on uh, emails, so I'll do weekly email updates about the class to all parents, so you can expect to see those uh, every week. You can always check on the online grade book to watch how your student is doing on these different levels. On Schoology, you're going to have access to the actual work that your student is receiving from me and handing back in to show their understanding of different targets. You can see what we're doing in class with a link to my online plan book, which is also on Schoology so that you can click on the week and see what's actually happening. Um, my website has links to all of these different places as well, so that's kind of a good starting point. And then finally, I would encourage students and parents to sign, sign up for a Remind text messaging system. So if you go into this system, basically you enter, as it says over here on the right, a number, like you're going to send a text to someone's number instead of um, putting in a phone number, you put in this number. 
and then you put this as the message at bio 00085 and then I can send you text messages about updates in class reminders and things like that without me ever having your uh, phone number and without you ever having my phone number so it's a pretty efficient uh, setup I've used it for a few years now and students and parents alike seem to like it a lot okay finally down here at the bottom um, because students have multiple times to go back and reassess I'm not offering extra credit in this class extra credit means going above and beyond and doing something in addition to what is already expected and that's kind of what the level four is so I want your grade to truly reflect what you've learned if you want to go above and beyond shoot for that level four there's a little bit more information here at the bottom about extra help for students technology use in the classroom, and a final note to parents and guardians. And then on the far right here is just some information about how I establish a classroom climate. You can read through that, but the main point is that we're going to be spending the first week of school helping students and myself come to an agreement on what makes a positive classroom climate for them and for me. So we'll be working as a group to establish those expectations on both ends, what I can expect of students and what they can expect of me. Down at the end is my contact information, so those are all the different ways you can get a hold of me. I'm really looking forward to this new year, and hopefully you are as well. We'll see you soon in class.